Wondering what it takes to be a part of the world of cranes and rigging? There are specific requirements that need to be met under OSHA regulations to be a qualified rigger, signal person, or operator. A qualified rigger is required during all hoisting activities and for any assembly disassembly procedures. Qualified riggers are needed any time workers are in the fall zone and during all hooking, unhooking, or guiding of a load. A qualified rigger is any person who has a recognized degree, certificate, or professional training in rigging and can successfully demonstrate the ability to solve problems related to load rigging. A qualified rigger must be qualified to rig the load for that job. They don't have to be qualified to rig every type of job. This is because every load requires a different type of rigging so the qualified rigger must have an extensive knowledge of the exact rigging work needed for that particular lift and load. A qualified signal person, sometimes called a spotter, is another important job when working with hoisting loads. A signal person is needed on site when the crane operator's view is obstructed. An operator could also choose a signal person anytime they have safety concerns that may be job specific. A signal person needs to know the different hand signals used on the job site and be confident in using them under stressful situations. They must know the operations and limitations of the equipment being used. To become qualified, the signal person must pass both an oral or written test and a practical test. Documentation of the signal person's qualifications must be readily available on site and must specify each signal type for which they're qualified. Anyone operating a crane or derrick must be certified to do so. They must be trained to recognize and avoid hazards in a manner and language they understand. There are four ways in which someone could become a certified crane operator. Through an accredited testing organization, an audited employer program, through the US military, or via obtaining a state or local government license. The operator needs to pass a written test demonstrating their knowledge of controls, ability to calculate capacity, how to prevent power line contact, understanding ground conditions and equipment support, and using information in the operating manual. They must also pass a practical test in which they demonstrate their ability to put all of this knowledge into practice.